me and for making it all the way to the end of the week. Um, all right, so, so uh, the basic question which I've been thinking about and which I guess uh, most of algebraic geometry about, is about is what do collections of polynomials look like? OK, so there's, there's um, two things I should make precise to, to talk about this question. Is, so first of all, what do I mean by collections of polynomials? And then what do I mean by look like? Um, so, so for this talk, collections of polynomials is going to be maps between algebraic varieties. Algebraic varieties. So um, here. X and Y, if you'd like, are complex manifolds defined by collections of polynomial equations. And then F is a map between them, also defined by a collection of polynomials. Of polynomials. And so you, you take a point in X, you plug it into the polynomials, and you get a point in Y. OK, so, so that's this part. So what, is, what does look like mean? So unfortunately, if you're given a map like this, it's a very complicated object. It's kind of hard to describe. So um, just like in Clem's talk earlier, I'm going to linearize this data. So I'm going to have to make an extra assumption here, which is that this map is smooth and proper. So if you're uh, a complex person, you can think it's a proper holomorphic submersion. But uh, if you'd like, you can think, for example, all the fibers of this map have the same topology. And then given that data, one gets some kind of algebraic object. One gets a representation of the fundamental group of Y on the cohomology. Well, let me pick a base point of the fiber. Uh, OK, so, so this is a kind of complicated object. So let me give you an example and, and show you uh, that this actually captures a lot of the geometry of your original map. So just as an example, let's take the following polynomial. So we'll take the set of x, y, z, and lambda such that uh, y squared times z is x times x minus z times x minus lambda. All right, so this notation means that I view x, y, and z as being well-defined up to scaling, um, and not all zero. So let me draw a picture of this. So, so, so if, I, if I fix lambda, this defines an elliptic curve, a curve of genus 1, except if lambda is at 0 or 1. So I'm going to restrict uh, y, the target of this map, to be c minus the points 0 and 1 sort of bad points where the topology of this changes. Um, and then if I vary lambda, I get a family whose fibers are genus 1 curves. So you should be minus lambda dead? Ah, yes, you're right. Thank you. Um, all right. Now what is this representation? Well, if I fix my base point y, so this is 0 and 1, and I move it in a loop around either of these deleted points, I can take a cycle upstairs and follow it, in, follow it around this loop, and maybe I'll get a different cycle than, than I started with. Put another way, this fiber E lambda looks like C uh, model lattice, and the fundamental group of this acts on the lattice. So in this example, we can make everything very precise. We get a representation of the fundamental group of C minus two points which is just free on two generators. I drew them here. So this is a loop around 1 and a loop around 0 into GL2Q. And uh, what's the representation? I'll send gamma naught to the matrix 1, 2, 0, 1, and gamma 1 to the matrix 1, 0, 2, 1. So here I've suppressed some choice of basis of the cycles here and orientation of these loops. All right. So the real question I ask when I ask what do collections of polynomials look like is the following question, which is uh, fix a Riemann surface x so which representations of the fundamental group of x into GLNQ come from geometry. And just to be a little bit more precise, comes from geometry means there's a smooth proper map like this. 
and a representation so that my given representation shows up inside of that. So it shows up as a subquotient. Now, uh, so Professor Deleen showed a while ago that this is a very restrictive condition. So via transcendental methods, Lynn showed the following theorem. So the set of reps from pi 1 of my fixed Riemann surface into GLN q, which come from geometry, is finite. So if you fix x and fix n, there's only finitely many representations that show up this way. Great. OK, so, so let me just remark that something kind of subtle is happening here. Um, so, so we have finitely many representations like this. Uh, the sort of strange remark is that if you replace, if you replace Q with Q bar, this is false. And it's because come, it come from geometry had this, this kind of subquotient definition. I mean, you, to come from geometry just means you show up inside of the, some representation. So for example, if you took x to be C star, like the simplest room on surface with non-trivial fundamental group, any finite order character shows up this way. There are infinitely many finite order characters with values in Q bar. OK. So, so uh, what I've been thinking about is, is sort of variants of this theor theorem that, that come from number theory. And, and so, so the first thing I'll, I'll mention is just a very slight strengthening of this theorem. Um, so, so again, x is a Riemann surface. And uh, n is a non-negative integer, then the set of representations from pi 1 of x into GLN QP, which come from geometry. is fine. OK. So this is a little stronger because because QP contains number fields of arbitrary degree. Um, great. Okay, so so where does this come from? I, I guess I have a bit of time, so I want to. I'm not going to say anything about the proof, but I want to say just like how you can use number theory to say something about Riemann surfaces like this. So, so first of all, this theorem comes from a kind of stronger structural result, which is um, the following. So the set of reps from pi 1 of x into GLN QP bar. So this is an algebraically closed field. So this is typically an infinite set, um, which come from geometry. is, well, it's not finite. It's discrete. So there's some topology on the space of p-adic representations. So a family of representations converges, let's say, if their trace converges. And uh, inside of the, all representations, the ones that come from geometry are a discrete subset. There are no limit points. So now, now this follows by some compactness argument. OK, so let me just say, how can you study this via geometry? Or sorry, via number theory? So what's the idea? Well, at the very beginning, I, I required that x and y and the map between them were defined by some system of polynomial equations. So you have finitely many polynomials, and each of those polynomials has finitely many coefficients. So uh, well, what does that give you? You have some map from y to x. And instead of thinking of this as a map of complex manifolds, you can think of it as a map of varieties over k, which is some finitely generated uh, q algebra. All right, or maybe some finite, some some field of finite transcendence degree over Q. So. All 
OK, and now, now we're in a little bit of trouble because this is a fundamentally transcendental object. But there's some algebraic version of it, the Atoll fundamental group, which I'll just call this completion. And uh, because it's defined algebraically, the Galois group of k bar over k acts on it. So the real version of this theorem is that there are finitely many representations which are in some appropriate way compatible with this Galois action. So, so just to finish up, let me tell you what I want to think about this for this year. And, and I'll, I'll state it slightly vaguely. But uh, there's so many interesting questions that, that can come out of it. It's hard to do them justice. So, so we have this action of the Galois group of an interesting field on the fundamental group of an algebraic variety. So if you'd like, if x is a Riemann surface, an f on Riemann surface, this is just a profinite free group. It's a fairly standard, ob simple object. And the question is, can we describe this action? Um, and yeah, so I'm interested in going from number theory to algebraic geometry, like the theorems I described here. But then there are also applications going the other way. So if you really understand the geometry of x and how it influences this action, maybe you can say something about the Galois group of k and get some number theoretic information from the algebraic geometry. So yeah, that's all I had to say.